Patrick Duncan, <coughs> and his speech is titled, I Want to Be Great. The speech is, I Want to Be Great, and please welcome Patrick Duncan. I have an incantation I want us to repeat two times, and I need you to say it like you mean it. Are you ready? Yes. yes. I don't care. I don't care. How long it takes. How long it takes. I don't want to be average. I don't want to be average. I want to be great. I want to be great. I don't care. I don't care. How long it takes. How long it takes. I don't want to be average. I don't want to be average. I want to be great. I want to be great. Thank you. Being average works for some. It allows them to remain in their comfort zone, a place where there are no challenges, a place where mediocrity is praised and complacency reigns supreme. Surrounding yourself with average people makes you average. Thinking average thoughts will yield average results. Living an average life will lead to an average death. A death where no trails were blazed. A death where no milestones were accomplished. A death where there wasn't a legacy left behind to immortalize average. What man in his right state of mind is searching for an average wife? Are you? <laughs> what woman, in her right state of mind, is searching for an average husband? For you? <laughs> As a student in junior high and high school, I didn't have a problem making average grades. Unfortunately, my parents and teachers didn't share that same philosophy. They were constantly reminding me that I wasn't reaching my potential. In my world, average grades meant I was passing. Who cares about potential? My neighborhood was filled with potential. Potential fathers, potential criminals, and potential unemployment. Once again, who cares about potential? When I graduated high school, in June of 1986, my attention immediately turned to me leaving my small hometown of Sylvester, Georgia and moving to the bright lights of the big city in Atlanta. It was here my life took a remarkable turn. I began to see glimpses of greatness and they all looked like me. Black folks working in corporate America driving luxury cars, eating at expensive restaurants, living in upscale neighborhoods, and being entrepreneurs. And for the first time ever in my life, I saw a black woman anchoring the local news, Monica Kaufman. <laughs> she wasn't reporting from the field. She was perched behind a beige-colored desk, poised, confident, historic, with a voice tapered in eagerness. I had stumbled upon a time and place where average was no longer good enough. The time had clearly come for me to reevaluate my life in all aspects and to begin to prepare a plan for greatness. A plan which started with me identifying some of the characteristics of greatness such as patience, perseverance, humility, and self-worth. With self-worth being the most important, in order for anyone to obtain greatness, you must first feel as though you are worthy. And I feel worthy. Mentally armed with these characteristics, 
and the multitude of examples that Atlanta had to offer, there was no doubt in my mind, I too could be great. Greatness lives in all of us, lurking in the depths of our souls, waiting to be ignited by an inspirational moment, personal experience, or keen observation. The main component of greatness is consistency. You can't be a great doctor, lawyer, teacher, parent, or friend if you are not consistent with your words, actions, integrity, trust, and respect. During the introduction of this speech, each one of you stood up and said, I want to be great. What are you doing <coughs> on a consistent basis to make sure that greatness does not elude you? Thank you.